and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Shaw, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Because we have the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Today we're going to talk about top three signs you have a frozen shoulder. These are three self-tests you can do yourself, and they're easy to do, and you'll mm -hmm. be able to understand what, if, whether or not you have one or not. There you go. By the way, if you're new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos on how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. Join us on our website, bobandbrad.com, because we're always giving something away. we got a beauty this week. <laughs> Uh, we'll show it in just a minute. Uh, you can also find it on Facebook. Facebook. It's pinned to the top of the page. Go to Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok if you want a 60-second version of our program. The product that we're giving away is the Renfo Massage Gun. This is kind of an adjustable one. It's kind of a little bit different. Uh, yeah, see how that works? So you can hit different spots a little bit easier. This thing really penetrates quite well. It's got a good... What do you call that range, Brad? Displacement. Uh, displacement, yeah. So really Ooh. takes care of what what ails you. All right, might even be oh. good for your adhesive capsulitis, right? There you go, Bob. Uh, speaking of which, that's another name for frozen shoulder, adhesive capsulitis. In that case, what, what's going on, you're seeing an inflammation or thickening or scarring of the capsule that goes around the shoulder. Let's show you that real quick. Yeah. I think that might be helpful. Yep. Good old Sam. Well, uh, this is a really nice uh, model of this, Bob. Yeah. Why don't we show this side first, oh, Brad? Yeah, so we well, have, yeah. Oh, I thought you wanted to introduce them. Yeah. There we go. We got the ball, basically, of the humerus. Mm -hmm. And then we have kind of the socket formed by a couple bones here. Now, around all of this is a tough, fibrous material that helps hold it in place. Right. And it's called the capsule. You can see a little bit of the capsule right here. So this is the thing that gets thick, it scars down, it becomes like glue. It holds the shoulder in place and it doesn't, it isn't able to move. Right, that capsule should be like a really elastic, uh, elastic. Like a band. Right, like a band, it should flex, but it gets tight and then it just does not allow mobility. Yeah, we'll talk about the phases of that in just a minute, but, uh, once that gets tightened down, you're going to find out it, it gets tightened in every direction. And that's going to be part of the test that we'll show today. Right. So, 2 to 5% of the population gets this. Uh, it's more women than men. Uh, it's increased among people who have diabetes. Mm. Uh, it's also, in, you have increased likelihood if it happened to one shoulder. It's more likely to happen to the other shoulder. You know, that's with other diagnoses too. But that's another story. Yeah. Uh, it's triggered often by mild trauma mm -hmm. or surgery on the shoulder. Sure. So uh, the reason I, I just recently wanted to do this now is because one of the people that works with us, one mm -hmm. of our physical therapist assistants, he has it. Yeah. And what's interesting to me is that he went to a doctor and got a, a cortisone shot for yep, it. The injection. Yeah, injection. But the doctor didn't, you know, I said, did he diagnose you with frozen shoulder? He goes, no. Um, so it was interesting. It's very clear when you have a frozen shoulder. Right. So yeah, and yeah. you'll see from the test. So with a frozen shoulder, there's three phases. There's a freezing phase. And uh, during that phase, the pain is probably, that's the worst painful phase. Because it, it's, it's painful at night quite often. So sure. you can't get to sleep. Uh, the second phase is that it's frozen. Yep. Stiff or frozen. It's tight, tight. Yep. You're not moving and the it third, very much. The third uh, phase is unfreeze. But the whole thing, this can take months or years to go through all phases. Right. I don't know if years is very common, but months it's is. It's common. It it's is. Come, yeah. From what I read, it can well, take. Well, I've never yeah, run into yeah. it, but yeah. So top three signs. Okay. First off, you want to make sure you know that you haven't dislocated the shoulder, mm. especially posterior. Unlikely. I, right. I, yeah, you're going to probably know it if, you're, if your bone went out of the socket. Pretty painful in yeah, a pretty painful. specific directions. The other thing that could be similar to this would be severe arthritis. Mm. But severe arthritis doesn't come on suddenly. Right, and it's typically with older people. Right. So uh, you, you can rule that out too. But Did you see a common age that this yes, happened? Yes, uh, from about age 50 on 40, 50. 
is for a frozen shoulder. Okay. So it could be arthritis. Sure. But arthritis, again, doesn't come on quickly. This can come on very quickly. Sure. Uh, uh, arthritis comes on very slowly, and you pretty much know when you have arthritis. Right. Yeah. So, all right. So the first thing you're going to do is you want to check what we call active range of motion of the shoulder. Mm -hmm. So the, the three signs are going to go three different directions. The first one Brad's going to show from the side is we're going to do flexion. And, you know, if you can only go up like this high and if you're having trouble raising it, uh, that might be something else then. But Yeah, usually frozen shoulder, from my experience, it goes up and it just wants to stop. Yeah. It's not real painful going through there, but it, it doesn't right. go. It doesn't want to go. And then if you try and push it or help it with the other hand, it still doesn't want to go. Well, you're, you're, you're giving I'm it away sorry, here. Bob, you're jumping I, ahead here. I jumped the gun. I jumped the gun. So the next one is abduction. So you, you, it's going to be limited in this way when you lift it up. When you lift it up on your own, it's going to be limited this way. And then when you put your arm at a right angle, the elbow, and then you try to go out. This is the one that tends to really be limited, Brad. Mm -hmm. So, like, this is average going way out here. You might only be able to go to here. Sure. You can't get, any, any, you know, any movement hard at all. This is the key, though, because there are other things that can cause you to be limited this way. Right. Uh, you know, a torn rotator cuff. But if you now take a stick or a, a yardstick or a broomstick or a booyah stick. Sure. And you're going to use the one arm to help the other. So now you're going to check flexion again. And in this case, if it's a frozen shoulder, you still won't be able to go any further than right. you did before. If you, it's not frozen, you're going to be able to lift it. Right, like impingement, which is a very right. common. That kind of hurts when you get through here. But once you get so far, then it, it's not so bad anymore is, is typical. Same with a torn rotator cuff. Sure. If it's torn and it's not frozen along with it, mm -hmm. um, you're going to be able to go beyond the, the original. So the next one, we did abduction before, and we only got this high, remember? Yep. So we try it again. Now, if you go this high on this one, it's not frozen. Right. You're going to only going to go that high again. So just to make it clear, so the good arm is yeah, doing this, all the work. This arm is helping it, making it go up. Right. Because, you, you know, obviously you wouldn't be able to lift it like this. Right. In the so, clinic... I don't use a buoy. I yep, do it. you just do it with your I, arm. I do it manually, and I get a good feel for it. But obviously, you can't do that by yourself at home. Right. You could do it with a pulley. Sure. A pulley system. Yeah. The last one, okay, again, we went out like this, remember? And this one only went this far. Now I'm going to grab on. And, if, again, I only go this far. That's a good sign that it's, it's a possibly a frozen shoulder. If you can go like this. Unlikely to be a frozen shoulder because right. you got a good passive range of motion. So that's really it. You just want to do the check out those three you know directions and sure. make sure that they do it actively and passively and see if they're limited. If you're limited, we're going to do another video this week. I, mean, I, I want to give. I don't want to leave people hanging, Brad. We got to help them out, right? Well, yeah, they're saying, "No, what do I do if I have it?" So we're going to show frozen shoulder pain. This is the title of it. It's going to be later this week. Frozen shoulder pain: twelve of the best healing home stretch exercises. A dozen. A dozen. That's a good. Not the dirty dozen. These are the good dozen. Yeah. So that's a good option, Bob. You'll find at least three of them that'll work well for you. Exactly. And they're good, actually, depending on what phase you're in. Like if you're in the freezing phase or the frozen phase. Right. And it's some. and with this, you do, you can get frozen shoulder in the summer. Yes, you can get it any time, <laughs> unfortunately. It's a lot easier to do it in the winter. That's yeah. for sure. All, All right. right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. <laughs>